Um, so here I am with my first impression uh, of this replica of the Harbin skull and uh, first impression is just the sheer size of it. It's enormous, uh, very big. It's, it's bigger than Petrona, bigger than Bodo on, on a, a look at it now. Um, extremely broad across the base. So looking at the face first of all, um, yes it's a, it's a very wide face but it's not a very deep face um, so it's quite a short face and it is relatively flat. Um, the cheekbones are flattened and they almost have a, a modern look to them. Um, the upper face of course very broad, very strong superbrutal torus but the torus when scaled against the overall skull size it, it is not that huge. Uh, quite a deep nasal root um, and again if we look at the side view of the skull the face is quite retracted it's no it's not as you know, projecting as we would find in a Neanderthal or in Broken Hill or in Petrolona uh, on my view. The nose is extremely broad but not very high. If we turn it over you can see the tremendous breadth of the base of the skull the breadth of the palate, the very large size of this molar, but at least a suggestion that the third molar was reduced in size from the uh, surviving sockets. The cranial base looks very flat. This whole area is flattened, but when we move to the occipital bone, we can see that there is not a strongly bordering occipital torus of the kind we might find in Broken Hill or Petrona, um, the big Heidelbergensis skulls. Mastoid processes seem quite large um, and when we look at the rear view you can see that certainly there's no sign of a, a Neanderthal spherical shape. There's not parietal expansion in the upper parietal but overall it's, uh, it's not a very primitive shape. Um, it does seem to have cranial expansion. The brain size is obviously very large. We can see that again with um, the post orbital constriction is not strongly developed, so this is very encephalized. The temporal bones seem quite high, and the temporal lines are relatively low. There seems to be no special sign of keeling, slight depression in the midline here. Um, and overall, for the size of the skull, it's, it's a very weakly developed occipital torus, and this is not at all what you'd expect if this was a Heidelbergensis skull. I would expect there to be a much stronger occipital torus and a highly angled occipital bone. So overall, you know, almost a, a more sapiens look to the rear of the skull in, in rear view, but certainly very long and low, but with a retracted face. So a new mix of characteristics that we haven't seen before in a fossil human from anywhere, um, and very surprising in, in something that's from northeast China. So a remarkable find.